in this video, we're gonna take a look at a shimmering yellow ink by Diamine, Golden Sands. Now, as always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also, down in the description is a link to the yellow ink playlist, so if you wanted to see more of them, you can find that there. I'm an ink guy, and let's take a look at the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. Now, unfortunately, the way this goes, you see I will have to hold it at an angle like I have in the past. Now, our general performance is that we have no feather spread halo sheen. It does shade incredibly well all the way through. It goes to a nice golden yellow. It's the gold shimmer on top that makes it very hard to see. Does it well in all three uh, writing samples here. The extra fine took six seconds to dry while the medium took seven. That scrubby shows how much color variation you can really get in this. This is a great ink. And a smear test you could not recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Lamy All-Star with a broad nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. We have no bleeding, no ghosting, and here we're kind of able to have it down. We have no feather spread, halo sheen. I realize it's harder to see. Some of that is still just because of the glitter. We do get shading in the extra fine and in the medium, not so much in the stub where it's coming out much lighter as a tone. The shading is really good and the glitter is not entirely hiding it, which is nice. The extra fine took nine seconds to dry and the medium took 13. Our scrubby is showing some color variation and we are getting it in the writing. In the smear test, you could not recover if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and then it's put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. Now you can see the gold line at the bottom where the shimmer stayed and the water pushed the ink up. And we see a golden yellow that's moving up. And then this very thin line across the top of a light turquoise, which is what's giving it so much great shading. The one on the right that's let dry for 10 minutes, we don't see a difference between the two of them, which means I don't expect much resistance here. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. Now we have no feather spread, halo sheen. We are get shading in the stub, in the extra fine. We see a lot of it. It still shows through even in the medium. The extra fine took seven seconds to dry while the medium only took nine seconds to dry. Our scrubby shows plenty of good color variation, which we are getting in the smear test. Believe it or not, I think you could recover this if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on a page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Just looking at the picture, you can see how difficult it is, like many shimmer inks, to photograph. Now, looking at the highlighter, I would not use this in a note-taking situation. The capital H is half blown out. For that reason alone, I wouldn't use it. I'm just risk averse. But the rest of it is actually quite readable. Water's lifting most of it, but still leaving quite a bit of this ink in place. Pen Flush is doing everything that water does and nothing more. Now the one third bleach solution is completely obliterating it. Great news, because it only took water to get this out of my pen. I didn't have to take the nib off that Lamy to get it entirely out. The next writing sample is done on G Lalo paper. We have no feather, or <laughs> we have no bleeding, no ghosting. Now I was hoping that the gray backdrop would really help it, and it's not. We have no feather spread halo sheen. We have no shading in the stub. We do have some decent shading in the extra fine and some decent shading in the medium. The extra fine is darker than the stub and the medium's about the same tone as the extra fine. 
Extra fine dried in four seconds while medium dried in five, and the scrubby for both do show some good color variation. We get it here, it's just not looking good on gray paper. And the smear test, I do not think you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, and the realm of normal was 2.1 to 2.9. Diamines Golden Sands has a viscosity of 1.72, making this a wet ink. If you're interested in how the viscosity and all that's done, then down in the description is a link to that video. Now let's take a look at Apica CD Notebooks. Here we get no bleeding, no ghosting. We have no feather, spread, halo sheen. We do get a little bit of shading in the stub, a little better shading in the extra fine, which is a little darker than the stub. The same good shading in the medium that we got in the extra fine with the same tone as the extra fine. Extra fine took five seconds to dry while medium took seven. The scrubby for both show a little color variation. It's better in the writing and the smear test, I do not think you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, and the realm of normal was 13 to 21 seconds. Diamine's Golden Sands has an average dry time of 9 seconds, making this a pretty fast drying ink. The last writing sample is done on Franklin Christoph paper. We have no bleeding and no ghosting. I'm glad I figured out the lighting a bit better for these writing samples. We have no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. We do get shading, not so much in the stub, better in the medium, or sorry, better in the extra fine that's a little bit darker a tone than the stub, and I think that's why. You see brown's going nice, dark to light. Fox is going light to dark. Medium, just a tad bit lighter than the extra fine, not as light as that stub. And the shading here is also very nice all the way through the writing. Extra fine took five seconds to dry and the medium only took six. Now the scrubby for both do show a little color variation and we are getting it in the writing. I think it looks better up here than down here. Smear test, there's a maybe that you could recover if you smeared while you're writing, just a maybe. Instead of finding inks that look like Diamine's Golden Sands, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I decided to go with a brown to really highlight the golden brown that this yellow ink does put down. I chose Papier Plume's Pecan. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description is a link to those playlists. So what do I think of the shimmering ink by Diamine Golden Sands? The shimmer ruins this beautiful golden yellow. It darkens as it dries where the shading just comes from nowhere and is awesome. Just ditch this shimmer for this ink, would ya? What nib and pen are going to give the best writing experience with this ink? As with many shimmers, a very wet medium or broad is really the way to go. But if you were to siphon off some of the ink and leave the shimmer in the bottle, then you could go with a medium flow, medium or fine nib and get a great tone with amazing shading. I hope you got something out of this video. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at KWZ's Walks Over Vistula.